selling on just He's old and he's tired and gray There's a girl So I kind of have different like frames of mind from which that I write songs. Um, some of them are very like deeply personal. Some of them are sort of very deeply personal to other people. And I, I always find myself like trying to keep it um, not too personal for like if I'm writing something about somebody else. Um, I'm always concerned when I play a song that somebody's going to hear it and be like, "What a jerk." I'm gonna tell him he can write that. this great fondness for like folksy rural 1950s like look and appeal and um, I really get into that sort of stuff um, and so I really like to I'm not wearing them right now but a lot of times I'll throw on some suspenders and you know I've got the the wavy 50s hair kind of thing but um, I, I think that lots of um, rural Midwestern towns are sort of like there are little bits and pieces that are snapshots of that time in general, um, especially like wandering around town, especially here, um, because a lot of the businesses have shut down, they're closed down. Um, they're sort of snapshots of the last like 50 years or so. Um, I think the thing that impressed me the most was the first time that you sang, you just seemed so comfortable with it. I mean, I remember growing up playing the piano, taking lessons and having to go through the whole routine of, oh, Mikey, play for us, it's Mom's Bridge Club. You know, that's a lot of fun, by the way, playing for a bridge club. <laughs> and I had played in high school a little bit, uh, but I was terrified of playing in front of large groups of people. And Max could just stand up and do it, and I thought, you know, that, if if that hadn't been a barrier for me, I probably would have gone on and played a lot more piano. Yeah, Carnegie. Is that in Nebraska? <laughs> yeah. Carnegie, Nebraska. Now the boy, he's moved away in his age. wants to know why his mama wasn't there that day. Bless me, mama, for I sinned. I'll turn you against your man. I just want to know why you
streets, I'll get you Recovery's been great. Uh, this past year has been great to me. I don't think I ever would have released the album if I had never gotten sober. Uh, from here, I mean, just the past year, like releasing the album, um, I feel like there's been a, a little bit of momentum that's built up from uh, just kind of getting a fire behind me um, to push me to keep doing this and now it's like this is all I want to do I just want to keep recording albums releasing albums playing shows um, I mean obviously I mean there are those musicians who say you know I'm just doing this for fun whatever but to me it's I mean it's <clears throat> I got a, deg a degree in English Here like <laughs> what am I <laughs> what else am I gonna do with that you know Shows is, I mean, you started playing at that even, even when we were, yeah, even when we were loud and <laughs> obnoxious. I loved it. Alt loved rock, it. yeah. But yeah, you were, you guys were always very supportive of it from the very beginning. I wanted to be like uh, 311 Peanuts mom, being always at his shows, <laughs> just like Peanuts. always in the car too. He could always catch the lyrics right away and sing right along with it and sing on key and you know at five and six and I always thought there's an upward turn as far as like appreciation and participation from musicians and non-musicians alike. Um, I think people are starting to care a lot more about it and not just in Lincoln and Omaha. Um, in the past year I've met a lot of people who came from small towns like me. I mean, and I think that <clears throat> what I've heard from here in Nebraska is that they want to continue to reach out to these places out west and bring music to them because nobody wants to, nobody tries to, and I think that it's something that would be appreciated. I mean, if there's one thing that it seems like Nebraska is missing, it's 
something that makes Nebraska a central point where bands would come to uh, have as their like central point. Um, you look at bands like Bright Eyes and it's like, yeah, they made it big here, but they moved away. I mean, say whatever you will about them. I know that some people don't like them, some people do, but uh, I think at this point, like, you can make it to a certain point and you can tour from here and you can release albums, but it seems like at a point people have to go away, at least for a time. And if I could have things exactly as I wanted, <coughs> there would be a label here. Pick me back up and take me back home, back to the places I know. So I take the sound is back to my home. Back to the that would be great because I don't want to have to leave this place and I would love to, I you know if I move away I want to come back here someday. You know, it'd be great to be able to become established as a musician to the point where you're making albums and you're touring and when you come back, you come back here and you don't have to go to New York City or Chicago or Portland or LA or, you know, Austin. So, I mean, that's definitely something that I wish was going on here. She'll pick me back up, take me back home, back to the places I know. Left and right, right and She knows.